Um, that means Singapore lawyers will have to tool up and, and be very different. And one thing lawyers hate is change. Um, so they're going to get a lot of that in the years to come. And then the Singapore lawyers started trying to come to grips with um, new types of ideas, new technology, new ways to run their law firm, or maybe the death of the law firm itself and the way practice is transforming. And we had to grapple with uh, new sorts of human beings called the millennials. And millennial lawyers are different. They are not motivated by money, but social change. They are not motivated by prestige, but by what they can do to um, have an effect on, on life and on society and a sense of achievement for themselves. They work very hard, but they take very long breaks. And in a nutshell, that's going to be the new lawyers of Singapore and maybe um, the new business leaders of Singapore and maybe the new political leaders of Singapore. We're handing over, the post-65 generation is handing over to the millennial generation. And we're not even sure what we're handing over. So that's a big headwind. I, I predict that Singapore lawyers will probably uh, be busier but make less money and they will have to take fewer breaks and start thinking of new things to do in the years to come. That's a big headwind for lawyers because all they like to think about is law. <laughs> but now they have to think about things outside the law. Now law firms are international and their, their headquarters may be Corporate headquarters may be based in Switzerland or, or somewhere offshore. The, the entity that, that runs around and has this brand is not tied down to the US or tied down to the UK or to Europe or, or to anywhere. It will just be an international brand. And that is the new sort of creature that um, law firms will be uh, dealing with. The largest ones are at risk because they are large, they need to function in a certain way to keep all of their employees happy. But they are also the ones who are rubbing up and competing with the international law firms. So they'll be the first to be, to be eyed by the, Singapore, by, by the international law firms. International law firms may, may want to make an approach to combine with them in a friendly way, like a marriage like an arranged marriage, like a love marriage. And, and that's the best kind of combination. But it may also happen that the large Singapore law firms don't combine. They get slowly eaten up by the international law firms. For Singapore lawyers, they have to retool and reskill. They have to learn to be Asians rather than Singaporeans. They have to conversely also learn to be more knowledgeable about um, this region and their country so that they know what they can offer. I'll give you an example. Um, Singaporeans have to be more multilingual. They have to be familiar with um, the cultures across uh, our boundaries and they have to be familiar with, with the laws of our neighbours. Um, I think Singapore lawyers in the past tended to be very focused towards Singapore laws and English laws, English common law. But today they have to be better trained and more experienced in customs around our region. Maybe England is losing its influence with us and maybe it's losing its influence with Europe. Who knows? So I, I started practice in the 90s, and that's about a quarter of a century ago. And today, when I want to talk to the young lawyers about practice, there is a disconnect, there is a gap, because they're not looking for the same things that I was looking for. Um, pay my mortgage, work in the same firm for my whole life, and be very good at a very narrow area of practice, deep but narrow. Now, today's lawyers, they may not want to stay in the same law firm 
for the rest of their lives. They may not be interested in putting down roots or paying their mortgage or pragmatic stuff that we were concerned about. They're looking outwards, not inwards. They want a breadth of practice. They want to see stuff and they want to have an impact on society and um, they want to be the good guys which is strange for lawyers because we, we are usually acting on both sides of disputes and deals. But today's lawyers, I have to convince them that you are doing the right thing, you are acting for the good guys, we're going in the right direction. So I guess what I mean to say is they have values. As an organization, in order to keep them, we have to change the way we remunerate them. Um, yes, it's important to pay them, it's important to give them benefits, but it's also important to inspire them, to tell them we are doing good, we are helping businesses grow, we are righting wrongs, we are seeking justice. As lawyers, um, I also have to offer them more opportunities to do pro bono work. Pro bono work in Singapore um, used to be a big deal, then it became a small deal, and now it's a big deal again 